Welcome to Collected Works Bookstore and Coffee House. We're in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, my name is Dorothy Massey, and my daughter and co-owner Mary Wolf and I have owned Collected Works for the last 18 of its now 35 years old, as Santa Fe's oldest and we think best independent in the city. Santa Fe has a population of 80,000 people, and it supports no less than 17 independent bookstores. How does Collected Works and the other 16 stay afloat? Uh, it's not easy. We all work very hard at what we do, and it is a very mutually supportive community of bookstore owners. The city itself is tricultural with an amazing amount of very well-read, very literary people. We boast more authors and poets, both genuine and wannabes, than most communities. And the combination of six major musical organizations, an incredible uh, museum system here, wonderful arts, ballet, opera, uh, it is a rich cultural city, and the people that live here and the people that visit here come out and support that culture in all of its ramifications. The literary arts is just one of many here. I think that what sets co uh, Collected Works apart is uh, the fact that we really have the space, we're very fortunate to be in this beautiful space, we have the space to become a community center and the fact that we do more than sell books. We have a very active children's program. We're not only in the schools, through the Rotary Club and, and other endeavors, but we are also running our own uh, story hours here two mornings a week. We have the space to do that. We have the space in the coffee house to donate out to 501Cs all over the city for their special events. We don't charge for them. Uh, it gets people into the store, so it's not totally kindness on our part, but it does bring people into the store, and it gives the community a sense that this is their store, that they belong here, and that we belong to them. Very often the first thing that is said is, wow, it smells like a bookstore. And I think people uh, enjoy that. They enjoy the fact that we have people who really know and read the books. And book selling is very, very different from selling almost anything else. You can go into a store and you can see a red sweater and if you like it, you can try it on and if it looks good, you can pay for it and walk out. But 90% of the time, you haven't read the product that you're buying when you're in a bookstore. So there is a great sense of mutual trust, mutual excitement, and in order to be able to supply that to the people who visit the store, both locals and visitors, uh, we have to have a very well-read uh, colleagues here. And there are 16 of us working here at Collected Works between the coffee house and the bookstore. I would be less than honest if I didn't tell you that it's been a very, I think the euphemism is interesting, three years since, uh, or four years since the recession, uh, moving here, enlarging the store, and obviously competing head to head with internet sales, which at least in the state of New Mexico, at least as we speak now, still do not charge sales tax. Uh, we cannot afford to give the discounts and we are required to collect the tax. So we're not playing on a level playing field. However, having said all of that, I truly believe that the public perception of giant corporations is changing, that people understand the importance of su uh, supporting a local endeavor which hires local people, pays local taxes, is involved with the local community. And I am very proud of the 15 colleagues that work here with me and Mary. We have a remarkable scientific community, both here and, of course, in Los Alamos. And alas, they lost their independent bookstore about a month ago. So we do a great deal with science and uh, theory and a great deal with philosophy. This is a deeply religious city. Uh, people are anxious to know about other religions, so religion does well. This whole wall behind me is paperback 
fiction and that rolls out of here on a steady basis, both to locals and to visitors who want something light to read while they're traveling and nothing too terribly important. Uh, the opera uh, breakfast meets here all winter long before the simulcasts from the Metropolitan Opera, uh, which comes to Santa Fe along with millions of other uh, viewers across the world. And there's a breakfast here and a lecture. Uh, so we do a lot with music, a lot with art, and uh, pretty much everything. The history of Santa Fe is rooted in three major cultures, the Native American, the Hispanic, and the Anglo. Now that's obviously uh, oversimplifying things, but each one carries a heritage that the writers are anxious to share. Uh, we boast uh, the best of the young Native American writers working today up at the Indian School. We do events for them here. Uh, we boast the best of the Spanish colonial art market. Uh, we sell books up at the Indian Market uh, in August, which is the largest Native American art market in the world. And for many years we sold books at the Spanish Market, again, the largest Hispanic market in the world. So these cultures are here and there are only 80,000 of us. So we're all kind of falling all over each other. And the sharing and the support that is universal in Santa Fe makes it a wonderfully exciting place to be. From the very early days, uh, Santa Fe was a mecca for artists who were free thinking. A lot of people left the more strictured societies of the East in order to practice their religion, their lifestyle, their uh, intellectual thoughts, their share with whatever friends or acquaintances they wanted to. And so it has always been a very yeasty place for people who are really thinking for themselves. And it is only natural that the gorgeousness of the scenery, the light which attracts the photographers and the visual artists, and then the performing artists who manage to both dance and sing at 7,000 feet above sea level. It's quite amazing. Um, but the availability of a small town makes it easy for people to become intimately acquainted with those in the arts, to serve on boards fairly quickly, to attend events, to meet artists. And the cross-culture of visual arts, performing arts, and literary arts is just a natural. This, right on our shelf here, is a perfect example of the cross-cultural work of the city of Santa Fe. Shoes for the Santa Nino was written and produced by the Santa Fe Opera. The venue was the Lenzik Theater. Children came from all over the city to see it. And Paul Retz and Barb Awald at LPD Press in Albuquerque produced this beautiful book. Collected Works sold the book at the event, and we had some leftovers. Those leftovers went to the city, extra stock. It then went as a part of a sister city program with a local gentleman down to Mexico and went to children in Mexico. So there you have the literary arts, the performing arts, the educational value, and the city cultural outreach, all in one volume. Wherever you are, Go in, investigate a local store. See if you like it. Try to form an allegiance to it. If you don't like what they carry, tell them. A lot of what we order comes from suggestions from our customers. I wish you had this book. I wish you had that book. And we'll get it for them. And very often, we'll get another copy for the store. And very often, that will sell quickly. So go to your local store, whatever you're trying to buy. See what they have. Talk to the people. These are your neighbors.